Emerson's Rosemount in situ oxygen analyzer probes are fully field repairable. In this video, we'll show you how to install a replacement cell in the oxygen analyzer probe and replace your diffuser using a Rosemount oxygen analyzer replacement kit. If you have not yet purchased a replacement cell kit or diffuser, please visit emerson.com to place your order and then refer back to this video. Let's start by reviewing the components in your replacement kit. Each kit contains an O2 cell, an O-ring, anti-seize compound, hose clamps, closed end connector, electrical tubing, ANSI flame gasket, DIN flange gasket, spare fasteners, and a corrugated metal seal. The tools you will need are a spanner wrench, Allen wrenches, sizes 5mm, 4mm, and 2.5mm, a flathead screwdriver, an open-end wrench, a multimeter, emery cloth or sandpaper, and PPE as required. After you've powered down the probe and removed it from the process, you're ready to begin the repair. Please use caution here, as the probe may still be hot. Use proper personal protective equipment or PPE. First, remove the filter, also known as a diffuser, and the flame arrester if your model is equipped with one. Next, remove the four fasteners holding the O2 cell to the probe flange. Please note that the cell is resting on top of a wire mesh pad that is connected to a wire running the length of the probe. Over time, the cell can bond to the wire mesh pad, and it becomes challenging to separate the pad from the cell cleanly. So, here, you will want to carefully twist the O2 cell before you pull it out to effectively break any bond between the mesh pad and the cell. The goal is to have a clean break between the mesh pad and the O2 cell. Once you've pulled out the cell, you will either find that the cell is clean, as in this case, or you will find that the cell contains the wire mesh pad, as in this image. If the O2 cell is clean, Continue with your repair by sliding the progress bar at the bottom of the video to the chapter entitled Continue with Clean Cell. However, if you pulled out the O2 cell and the wire mesh pad is still connected, you will need to replace the cell pad and wire. In that case, please continue watching. Now, we'll demonstrate how to remove your heater strut and replace the cell pad wire along with your O2 cell. First, remove the cover and unscrew the terminal blocks and electronics boards. Gently pull and remove the quick connects. Now use your 3 16 hex to remove the four fasteners holding the heatsink to the blue housing. Remove the blue housing from the heatsink. Be careful to not pull out the wires along with the housing. Remove the metal retainer collar. Remove the two red or black flexible hoses using a needle nose pliers to compress the hose clamps. Use the wire handle loop to pull the heater strut out of the probe body. Use caution when pulling this out, as there are fragile components in the heater core. Before continuing to the next step, verify that the ceramic tubes are not broken. If the ceramic tubes are broken, you will need to replace the heater strut, which is not included in a cell replacement kit. Contact your Rosemount salesperson for assistance. Next, you will check that the heater is functioning properly by measuring the resistance with a multimeter. If your resistance is outside of the range of 67 to 77 ohms, you will need to replace the heater strut. Now, we'll proceed with replacing the cell pad and wire. Find the orange wire with the purple crimp connector and cut off the purple crimp connector. Pull off the orange insulation from the orange wire. Then, Push the wire a couple of inches in toward the heater strut. Then from the other end of the heater strut, pull the wire out. Next, feed your new cell pad and wire back through the channel. Reattach the thicker orange insulator. Strip the jumper wire and connect the insulator so that a half inch of pad wire is exposed for crimping the jumper wire. Crimp the orange wire back together using the provided purple crimp. 
Make sure the pad wire is insulated so it doesn't ground out. Insert the heater strut back into the probe body. Align it so the flat part of the heater strut aligns with the calibration and reference gas fittings. Once the heater strut is close to being fully inserted, use a small Allen wrench to guide the calibration tube through the opening in the heater strut. Reattach the red or black flexible tubes. The tubes should not cross each other. They run left to left and right to right. Reinsert the metal retaining collar. Verify that the housing cover O-ring is not damaged. You can replace it with one from the kit if necessary. Feed the wires back through the blue housing. Align the housing to the heatsink and torque the four housing bolts down at 35 inch pounds. Connect the quick connects to the electrical boards. Screw the board and cover back into place. There are spare fasteners in the kit if you lose yours. Now that you've replaced the cell pad and wire, you are ready to continue the process of replacing your sensor cell. Set the old cell aside. Remove the metal gasket from the probe body and discard it. At this point, you must clean the machine surface of the O2 probe with an emery cloth or brush to ensure your surface is smooth and clean. Now you will need your kit. Apply anti-seize to the four fasteners and the metal gasket. To start installing the replacement cell, place the new gasket on the probe end and place the new O2 cell into the probe body. Alignment is critical here. Ensure that all five holes are aligned correctly and pay attention to the orientation of the gasket. Using a cross pattern, torque the four fasteners down to 35 inch pounds. Now. Reassemble your flame arrestor if your product contains one. Then install the diffuser. Apply anti-seize to the threads before screwing it on. Your repair is now complete. After you've hooked up your power again, remember to calibrate your system. For more information, please visit emerson.com.